So I've had this glass bowl sitting in my closet for quite a while now, and I decided to combine it with this piece of Malaysian driftwood and make a beautiful piece of living art. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. As I said, I've had this glass container for quite a while now, as well as this piece of Malaysian driftwood. So I decided to combine the two and see if I can make something out of it. Starting by placing the piece of Malaysian driftwood into the container. My idea for this was to go with a very vertical scape, so I messed around a little bit until I got something I was happy with. Unfortunately, as you can see, the piece of wood won't stay up by itself, so I'll need to take a little bit off the end and flatten it a bit. Though it is flat, you can see how angled it is, thus causing the problem. To fix this, all I did was take it out to the garage, set it in a vise so it won't move, then use a handsaw and cut a little bit off from the end. As I said, I wanted to go with a very tall and vertical scape here, so I didn't want to take a whole lot off. Just a little chunk off the end to flatten it out and take away that angle. You can see how much flatter the bottom is now, and this should fix the problem, so I went ahead and got the container and set the piece of wood back into it. It's much more stable now and can support its own weight, but if I move it too abruptly, it might fall over, so I'll use a little bit of silicone to help fix this. Before doing this, I'll take a paper towel and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and rub the bottom of the container, removing dirt and debris and allowing for better adhesion. Then I'll apply a generous amount of silicone to the bottom of the wood, firmly press it in place, and allow it to cure for a full 24 hours. Coming back the next morning and the scape is not only looking great, but is a lot more stable now. However, in this current state it does feel a bit bland, so I'll use a couple more pieces of driftwood to add a little bit more detail. Using these pieces, I started placing them in various locations, just experimenting with different layouts and techniques, trying to make something that's detailed yet simple. After working with it for a little while, I finally got something I was happy with. However, these pieces won't stay by themselves, so I'll use a little bit of super glue to help secure them. Adding super glue to contact points where the wood meets will help to strengthen the scape and prevent it from breaking later on. I work my way around the scape, making sure to get as many contact points as possible. Before the super glue dries in order to hide it, I'll sprinkle it with a little bit of cocoa fiber. Once that's done, the scape is finally finished. I really love the way this turned out and it should be the perfect building blocks for what I have planned. Not only am I happy with it, but it was also cat approved. However, me and the cat both agreed that the bottom was looking a little bit plain, so I experimented with some river rock and Seriu stone and decided to go with the Seriu stone. Like the scape, I just worked my way around the build, placing stones wherever I thought they looked most natural, while also trying to keep things fairly simple. After placing stones for a little while and working with things, I ended up with something that I thought looked pretty good. It definitely adds to the scape and makes everything feel more complete. However, just like the driftwood, this won't stay by itself, so I'll use a couple cotton balls wedged in between some of the rocks and apply some super glue over those to create a very strong bond that will prevent the scape from falling apart. Also similarly to the driftwood, I'll use a little bit of crushed up Seriu stone to help cover the super glue. And with that, the scape is finished and looking awesome. I originally wasn't going to add stones, but I'm very glad I did and I think they'll add a little bit of detail and interest to the water feature. Now that the scape is complete and looking great, the next step is the planting. I have a couple medium and large plants with varying colors and textures that I think will look really great with this build and bring it to life. Not only will all these plants look really cool and give a really cool effect, but they should also thrive in this environment. However, before adding them, I need to prep them for planting. To do that like I usually do, I start by removing each plant from its pot and then breaking up the roots from the soil. I repeat this process for every plant, making sure to get off as much of the soil as I can. After thoroughly removing the soil from each plant, I'll take them over to the sink and wash off any of the remaining soil. In addition to this prepping process, I'll also use a little bit of sphagnum moss and cover the roots to help create a growing medium for the plants as they can't grow on the wood themselves. I added a decent handful of moss to a cup and then used a little bit of water to help rehydrate it. Then, as I said, I started covering the roots in a generous layer of sphagnum moss. Unfortunately, the sphagnum moss won't stay as is, so I'll use a little bit of black thread to help fix that. This is a great way to attach any plants or moss to any sort of scapes and other things. Not only does it hold them pretty firmly, but it's also not very noticeable, which allows for a more naturalistic look. Anyways, I repeated this process with the rest of the plants. For some of them, like the purple waffle, I ended up splitting it into a few different sections. Starting with the planting, I decided that the bird's nest fern would be the focal point of this build, so I placed it on top. I used a little bit more black thread to help keep it in place. Unfortunately, it wouldn't have stayed up by itself, and the thread is a little bit tedious to get right in this tight of a space, but I ended up getting it to work. Then just a little bit down into the left of the bird's nest fern, I added the dracaena. Then I added one of the sections of the purple waffle plant to the water area, as well as behind the bird's nest fern. I unfortunately forgot to record it, but I added the Fetonia to the right of the scape. I also decided that I wanted to add a couple of air plants to the scape to help bring a little more of that detail. 
With the planting done, it's time to address the substrate. Again, I'm just using a little bit of white sand as I thought that it was very neutral and would work perfectly for this build. After adding the sand in, I used a tool on my finger to help slope it up towards the sides to give it an element of depth. Then I went ahead and filled up the container with dechlorinated water and that completed the build. This was one of those weird projects that I didn't really have a plan for in the beginning, but I just ended up rolling with it and it turned out amazing in my opinion. I've seen a lot of builds very similar to this and I've wanted to try it for a while, but I've never really committed to it. While playing around with a couple things in the animal room, I got these materials and decided to just try it out. Though this was sort of an unplanned project, this ended up being one of my favorite projects of the year. However, that's going to do it for this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next week.